I think the audio always sounds good. Your audio sounds really good. Good. My audio is suspect at times. It's okay. this mic, man. This mic and this board. The mic's really good. I know. I'm jealous of the board. My board is not as good. And it's weird because my microphone is a Rode Podcaster mic, which is supposed to go with the Rode Podcaster mixing board. So I'm like Frankensteining this whole fucking thing together. But yeah, it man. works. It functions great. Oh, shit. You need this one. Look at that. Which I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need a monitor somehow. I wish I could do it through OBS. But I got to monitor it. Yeah, I was wanting one of those just like little, you know, little touch pads. Just like, mm. boop, boop, instead of like doing it on my phone. Because I can like push it up on my phone, but it's annoying because my phone will fucking... It doesn't stay open the whole time and it'll click is, off. Is this one the laugh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> They're hilarious. <laughs> I love those damn things. Um, shit. Oh, so I didn't tell you this. I forgot to text the family. I got my vaccine yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I got that. I got the J&J one hitter. Mm. Dude, it kind of fucked me up. <laughs> like last... I swear to God, dude, I felt like my head was exploding yesterday. We took Carlisle to training. Yeah. I had to, I had to loosen my snapback hat. I had to like unnotch it two notches because my head was like a balloon. Damn. Like it was like swelling. And that's like one of the side effects, like the allergic side effects is like swelling and then like bad headaches. And I got a really bad head. Like my head was throbbing. It was terrible. And I was like, this sucks. And I had to loosen my fucking hat because I was like, oh, my head's going to explode. Like it felt like a balloon. It was just tons of pressure. I could feel it. And my, I was like, my face is going to explode. Like if someone had a needle and they just like popped my forehead, it just would have went. <laughs> it was wild. And then my headache went away and like right around nine o'clock and I was doing the review on this cigar right at nine o'clock. I got super fatigued. Like I was like, oh, yeah. there, I was like, I felt like a zombie. It was wild. I was like, this is weird as shit. It was such a weird feeling. And then I woke up this morning. I was like, back to normal. I feel great. Damn. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad it glad it seemed to have worked. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> the thing is, is like when you get the paperwork, which I find to be really funny because they're not FDA approved, there's literally verbiage in the paperwork that says this may not work at all. Like we, there is no conclusive evidence to suggest that this will work <laughs> and I it's on all, it's on the Pfizer one. It's on the Moderna one. It's on the Johnson and Johnson. They all say the same thing just because it's not FDA approved. I feel like the only way to truly know if it works is to suck on the tongue of a COVID patient. Yeah. Yeah. You got to spit in someone's mouth. Let, let them stick their tongue inside your nostrils. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But I mean, even even so, it's like, okay, well, let's just say like hypothetically, it's only 85% effective. Well, that's better than 0% effective. Like that's better than not having anything. It's, right? like a con it's like a condom, you know? It's supposed to work every time, but sometimes that bad boy tears. Yeah. You never want that to happen. Wait, where did the condom go? And she's like, pulls it out of her vagina. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Whoopsies. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That's bad news. Yeah, I guess I have my protective COVID condom and we'll see Pretty how much. we'll see how it works. Dude, it was crazy because like the it was in the Dayton Convention Center, which by the way, probably should have went to one more local because it just reminded me how awful people in Dayton are, like the actual like people. Yeah. Dude, there was a guy in front of me. I kid you not. Like you know, you kind of always talk about like, there's a, a large pop piece of our population that is just stupid. Like they just exist, right? They're just morons. This yeah. guy was walking in front of me and he's talking to his girlfriend or wife or whatever, super white trash, like intense white trash, like literally crawled. He probably doesn't even live in a trailer home. He lives like underneath the crawl space of a trailer home and just like crawls out of it in the morning, puts his wife beater on and is like, let's go to work. Um, <laughs> He's, he's walking in front of me and he looks at his girlfriend and he's like, well, we're going to get this shot. What if it didn't work? And she was like, what do you mean? If, what if it doesn't work? He's like, what if it doesn't work? She's like, then it doesn't work. He's like, but what happens? And she's like, you get sick and you get COVID. He's like, 
well, what are we getting the shot for? And I was like, Jesus oh. fucking Christ, this cannot be a real conversation. Hey. I should have just been like, you know what? This isn't for you. Good old boy. Good old boy. Jim didn't take <laughs> probability and fucking statistics. In high it's, school. it's no clue. He literally goes, what if it doesn't work? And he sounded just like that. She's like, what do you mean if it doesn't work? He's like, well, what happens if it doesn't work? She's like, then you get COVID. And he goes, why are we here? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Hey, all right. Hey, in his head, you either win the lottery or you don't. <laughs> like, yeah, no just, shit. No yeah. shit. God damn. I was there like, there's no chance. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? I was like, are you really have? And then uh, there's two guys behind me because they literally usher you in like cattle and then you stand in these like lines. It looks like an airplane hangar full of fucking just lines of people. Yeah. And there's two guys behind me and they were kind of the same way. Like, ah. How do I say this? How do I say this without getting myself in trouble? It's like the kind of people that you see doing road work. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty remedial. Not a lot of thought that goes into it. These two guys are standing behind me and they must have been like guys who work together, which apparently they scheduled their appointment at the same time because they were in like the same shit. And the guy behind me was talking about, and it's just pulling shit out of his ass, by the way, like anecdotal completely, like none of it is statistically relevant. He was talking about like the number of COVID cases in other States. He's like, you hear what they're doing in Texas? He's like, nobody wears masks anymore. And the numbers just keep spiking, which is not true. It's just not absolutely not the case. If you look at the CDC numbers for Texas, that is absolutely not true at all. <laughs> at least it wasn't two days ago. And I was like, I don't, think he's saying and the other guy's just like i know i hear it's like crazy down there and everybody's getting covid you know what? a bunch of people are dying there's a spike you know there's an increase and i'm like i don't think that's right <laughs> you know what i heard that you know them tyson farms well i heard that the covid thing has has broken off and now it infected Goddamn all the, all them chickens at the tyson factories now i can't even buy my fucking chicken fries and chicken tenders to put in the oven because I could get COVID from chicken. Yeah. And it, and the sad thing is, is when you were saying that dad's picture popped up in my head. Just yeah, I know. And that's dad. sad. Just an image of my own father, which by the way, can we recap a hilarious story real quick? So hold on. I'm going to, this is where OBS would come into handy because I would just do my screen from my yeah. phone and then we could just, God, it would be great. We really need to learn that program, but I'm just going to read this for the audience because I was so fucking confused. And I just stopped texting back because I didn't know what was happening. So here's here's essentially the short text message um, that my dad and I were having. We were having an exchange about, he asked me if I was going to go get the, the COVID shot. And I said, yeah. So it started off with, hey, are you guys getting the vaccine? No punctuation. There's no question mark. Just says, hey, are you guys getting the vaccine? Nothing it's a statement. It. It's a statement. It's rhetorical. <laughs> I said, Lauren has hers. I'm currently trying to schedule mine. He says, good. I said, I want the new Johnson and Johnson. I want the new Johnson and Johnson one, but they're only doing them at the convention center on Fridays. To which he responded, don't use the par parking garage. It costs me $1,400. <laughs> to which I responded, $14 or $1,400. That's a big difference. To which he responded, $2,100. Cost me $1,400. To which I responded, Decimal points are crucial here. You mean $14 and not $1,400, right? Meaning that I'm thinking he's paying for a parking space. Yeah. He goes, no, $1,400. I'm reading this verbatim, by the way. This is exactly how it's, it's, it's written in text. No, $1,400 right bedside wheel opening to wheel opening three by three foot square. <laughs> this is the next thing he texted. Side old fucker and his wife riding my ass when I got to the top, he took off. Still don't know what's going on, including service work, 2300 Jack Dunbit did Jack Dunbit for me at cost 1400. The old fucker and his wife went to the other other of the garage and they took off running concrete walls. Don't move or give. And I responded, oh, shit, you got hit. No, he was on my ass and I got into the wall and couldn't get off of it. Have you ever parked in the convention center parking lot? It's a bitch. So park on the street if you go there. To which I responded, it's been a long time. Didn't ask another question because <laughs> I was so confused. <laughs> which, by the way, not in his defense. This isn't in his defense because he was trying to blame 
and you can tell this part of the story. He was essentially trying to blame somebody for something he was wrong doing. He hit his, no one hit him. He smashed his own truck up against the barrier. Now, here's what I will say. It is a very narrow kind of curly Q garage, right? Sure. However. Like a bank line. However, there's two things that that come into effect that play out in an element of, of caution when you're going there. One, it tells you if you're in a truck that exceeds this length, don't come in here, which wasn't dad's truck. Also, when you're driving up, you understand how tight it is, which means you take extra precaution, you slow down, and you make sure that you actually get up there safe and sound. Now, Chris, tell me what you told me at Easter. Dad just hit a wall. Dad hit a wall. Dad hit a wall and blamed it, some old dude. He blamed someone behind him. Yeah, but like this he, person was rushing him. He never told me that someone was behind him. He literally said he hit the wall and scraped up the side of his <laughs> truck <laughs> in a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Okay, so the best part about the whole thing is Dad is just desperately trying to place blame on somebody sure. else. But in the text message, now that I understood the situation, because there was no way I could continue having this conversation with dad in text. I'm like, I have to end this now. I cannot keep responding because it's just going to get worse. We're going to go down this weird rabbit hole and then he's going to call me and I'm not going to want to talk about it. So you and I calibrated it on Easter and then you filled in the blanks for me. So I was like, oh, cool, Chris. Thank you. Within a sentence, you were able to tell me exactly what happened in one sentence. Got it now. Everything's clear. So essentially what happened in my recap to you was, Dad smashed his own truck into the wall. He's trying to blame this old guy, and it cost Dad money to get it repaired. Dad paid out of pocket to get it repaired. Obviously, he wasn't going to connect with insurance on that. So what does that tell you, Chris? If Dad Dad cannot connect with insurance on this, and he's admitted that no one else hit him, who's at fault in your eyes? Dad. Thank you. Case fucking closed. It pissed me off that dad was blaming someone else for something he did that was his fault. Now, I'm not saying someone wasn't on his ass, but there's certain things you can do. What are they going to do? Run into them? Right. Take your like, fucking you, time. Take your time. Go slow as you want. They're going to do it. If someone was on my ass in one of those things, I would slow down. I would crawl up that motherfucker. I'm like, you let somebody rush you up a dad. curly Q fucking turn style parking garage? Uh, what? What? Should have got their insurance, dad, if it was their fault. <laughs> now, part, exactly. That's my point. Now, part of me, part of I would have, I would have hit the wall, gotten out of my truck and said, give me your fucking number. <laughs> I love how he says in there, in this text message, the old fucker ran off like he did something wrong. He didn't run off. He drove he to where to he park. was going. He went, he to, went to park where he was going to park because he did nothing wrong. And he probably pro- looked at dad and goes, what is this fucking idiot? He's probably doing? like, oh, fuck, this dude's scraping up his truck, his brand new <laughs> truck into this wall. And there's no way that old guy was going, this is all my fault. <laughs> He's probably yeah. looking at dad going, who the fuck is this guy? He, look at this fucking beast. The, there's probably an 85-year-old man behind him going, this motherfucker shouldn't be on the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's an older guy than dad going <laughs> And, I, and it's great when I hear dad say old fuck because dad is an old fuck. Yeah. Dad is old. You're that yeah. guy now. Because he, that 85-year-old's thinking, look at this old fuck scraping yeah. the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, the whole thing. So once I figured out dad wasn't hurt because I was like, oh, fuck, you got hit. And he goes, no. And then I just stopped responding. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. And it was just to make sure he was okay. I just was like, this is the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah, it's the just way, a stupid fucking dumb story that just irritates me to no end. The way I found out was because I asked him if Kale could spend the night with him one of the like one of the weekends back, and he goes, "Well, I don't know." And I was like, "Well, what do you mean you don't know?" He literally coaxes you in to ask him more questions. He just won't tell you. He, he wants coaxes to, yeah. you to ask. So more here's the questions. thing. Here's the thing, Chris. That's what he was trying to do with me in that text message, and that's why I just. <laughs> I dis- Dude, I was fucking Houdini. Yeah. I was just like, I'm out. I'm a shadow. I'm Chris Angel, and I'm just disappearing. Yeah, he was like, well, that depends. And I'm like, 
on what? What does it depend boom. on, Dad? <laughs> and he goes, well, my truck's going to be in the shops getting fixed. Okay, what happened, Dad? Slammed into the wall, scraped up the side of the truck in a parking garage. And I don't know when it'll get fixed. Okay. Do you so still want to watch Kale? You just without a car? I'm confused. I don't know. I was like, do you still? I was like, can you still watch Kale? <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. Can you still watch my son? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the whole thing is so ridiculous. <laughs> God damn, dude. It's just like. He can't drive. I mean, we've seen him back up a not, truck and trailer. He's not a good driver. No. Dad's the last person on earth that needs a truck. Like, he's the last person on earth who should own a truck. It's disturbing watching him drive that thing. He's like Gimli from Lord of the Rings trying to drive in a truck. He can't see where the fucking dash. He can't see where the dash. And you ever, he's you ever a seen dwarf. Dad, you ever seen yeah, Dad get Gimli's out of the truck? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really weird watching Dad get out of a truck because it looks like he's falling a mile. I know. Like every time he gets out, I'm like, he's going to sprain an ankle. Yeah. There's, there's this, he literally, it's like to, a get out of his, to get out of his truck safely, he needs like a bungee cord. For sure. Or like a long ladder. Yeah. <laughs> like one <laughs> of those rope ladders ladder. that he could just throw over the edge and just start climbing down. <laughs> it's really hard to watch him get out of that thing. Yeah. And to watch him get into the thing because he's old and short. And he has to grab the fucking holder inside and like hoist himself up. And it's it. like the man doesn't have joints because he like rotates everybody. Like, he, like he's got no kneecaps. <laughs> he's just got one. Le- it's just one long leg with no <laughs> joint at all. It's just, no calf. No nothing. It's just fucking one long bone that goes down to his foot. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> it is really strange, isn't it? Thank God neither one of us are built. I've worked so hard in the past 10 years not to look like, not to be that kind of, I'm like, I because I know genetics and I'm like, if that fucking happens to me, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> I worked so hard to make sure that that's not going to happen. Oh, poor dad. I know. I love, I fucking love him to death, but Jesus Christ, man. The fact that he just like was so insistent on blaming this other person <laughs> For himself hitting a wall is just like, what are you doing, Dad? Like, come on. Uh, all right, let's get the hey, fuck out of this. He can't take blame for anything. That's what it is. Oh, he can't. That is the worst. That is the worst to take. I used to be that way, and I'm not anymore. Like, if I fuck up, I'm like, hey, I fucked up. Yeah. Dad cannot do it. Cannot. It is like not in his soul to take blame for anything. Yeah, which is sad. Because he ain't going to change. He's almost 73 is not going to change. No. Um, anyway, you want to see something gross? Yeah. Tell me, have you seen this yet? Wait. Just read the caption. This guy found shrimp tails in his cinnamon toast crunch. How does that happen? Is that not disgusting? How does that happen, though? He's apparently, because look, he's checkmarked. He's verified. So he's got to be a big guy, right? And then Cinnamon Toast Crunch responded and said, we're sorry to see what you found. And We're they sorry to case. see what you found. We would like to report this to our quality team and replace the, bo- replace the box. Yeah. Can Dude, you the please? dude's never going to eat it again. Well, he, they're defending themselves. Now go to the next one. So the next one says, after further um, after with our team that closely examined the image, it appears to be an accumulation of the cinnamon sugar that sometimes can occur when ingredients aren't thoroughly blended. We assure you there's no possibility of cross-contamination with shrimp. Now, I'm not blaming, I'm not blaming Cinnamon Toast Crunch at this point, but this is his reaction to it. Those are clearly shrimp tails. Okay, well, after further investigation with my eyes, these are cinnamon-coated shrimp tails. You those. <laughs> I wasn't all that mad until you tried to gaslight me. Um, those are definitely shrimp tails. Now, here's what he'd found. So he's digging deeper in the cereal bag that he purchased at Costco and made other discoveries. So I was convinced to go back through the bag since when I first noticed the shrimp tails, I freaked out and closed the box. Here's my findings, which also includes a weird string, which you can see at the bottom of the picture. And then his fiance found another bag open that was then taped shut. There was actually tape on it. They found dental floss in the bag and rat droppings. Oh, <laughs> so it's either a Costco issue or it's a cinnamon toast crunch issue. It's not a jazz. What's it, Jensen carp issue. It's not a Jensen carp issue. Could you imagine fucking finding that? 
and your cereal. Could you imagine? Dude, I, mean, I would be, and here's the thing. If I were to rank my top three cereals, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is volleying back and forth between number one and number two seed. It's really good. It's fucking amazing. And I'm a huge cinnamon fan, right? So I eat cinnamon rolls all the time. Huge cinnamon fan. So when I see stuff like this, it makes, and we have Cinnamon Toast Crunch in the, in the cabinet right now in our pantry. And it's like, I'm having a hard time fathoming even eating it. It's not even because of the shrimp tails. That's one thing. The rat droppings and someone's dental floss. That's a whole other thing. How does that happen? And there is no conclusion to this yet. The investigation is still open, according to Cinnamon Toast Cruncher, aka General Mills, who is the parent company. This is not yet closed here's out. Here's the thing. It can't be Costco, and here's why. The bag would have been, or not the bag, the box would have been altered or opened previously, previously before he got right. it. and he didn't Unless you any. glued it shut from the bottom yeah. or something and really kind of concealed but he didn't mention any con- like tampering with the actual outside box. No, he never mentioned that. So through an investigation, it would lead you or conclude that it had to be something with General Mills. It had to be something with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I'm saying disgruntled employee who obviously went to some sort of buffet and got a shrimp plate and decided to come back and go, you know what? Fuck this place. Just and toss just them in. Dr- whatever was in his pocket at the time. Now it doesn't really, the rat droppings has me a little perplexed, Could but the rest imagine? of it, it just you imagine you flick it in. The belt's going like all these cinnamon toast crunch. This guy's on his lunch break, fucking eating shrimp scampi. He like, <laughs> just talks it over in. the belt. And he just like, and then he like gets up for a second and like, Hey Ron, Hey Mark. And he elbows the whole fucking lunch into, <laughs> <laughs> into, the, into the conveyor belt. Like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> And then later he's got his elbows on there and he's flossing his teeth. He's just like picking through. If someone grabs his attention, he just kind of flips it right into the bag. I feel like that's how it happened. That would, would be like funny. It's, 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 eating lunch. And here's the thing. Like, I don't like what investigation are you going to do? That's going to uncover anything like general mills. It's there. Like you're like, could you even get like the FDA or anybody involved in this at that point? Cause they're shrimp like, tails. Did like you hear they, 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 uh, they're having a big conference here on the factory floor to talk about some something. Did you get the memo? Yeah, I got the memo. I got the memo. It's, I'm curious what it could even be about. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, it was brought to our attention through Twitter that a customer had found the remains of <laughs> a mummified series of shrimp tails in their bag of cereal. Now, we've mentioned this on multiple occasions. You are not to eat your lunch over your workstations, and that includes belt workers. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I've seen you eat over there before. We've we've been watching you, Derek. (laughs) But this has happened 30 times now. (laughs) Dude, it's horrific. It literally makes me nauseous. Like, it makes me nauseous. Now, do you want to see something else crazy? Sure. So, have you heard, like, what's going on in Australia? No. Pro- oh, the I- spiders? Yeah. So, here's, yeah, multiple things. Here's what I love about Australia. The Aust- Australia is, like, so proud that they've, like, kept COVID under wraps for such a long time. They're like, oh, there's not that many cases here. We've done a good job. And they have. I'm giving them credit. So they, you know, kept cases at a minimum, really took a lot of precautions, necessary precautions in the beginning. And it was like, Australia strong. Look at us. Now, I'm going to ask you this question, Chris. Do you, do you, do you really care? Do you really care about COVID precautions when all of this is fucking swimming around your front yard? Yeah, you should see the f- there's there's plenty of photos photos and videos of people's front doors and garage doors and now, side walls. So, so this looks bad, right? That's a lot of spiders. Yeah. But as you progress through the video, it gets way worse. Like they're fucking everywhere. So I was reading the news report on this and they were saying how the spiders themselves, like if people were going out in boats because there's mass flooding that the spiders and snakes would fi- like literally flock oh, to the boat to get away from the water. Yeah. So if you were in a boat, they were like, don't go in a boat. We are cautioning you because if you look at all those, it's just a fucking swamp of spiders. That's my worst fucking nightmare, especially in Australia, because I'm sure most of those are fucking would just kill you in an instant. 
This guy just walking out in his fucking water boots. Like, yeah, you know, psycho. And, and what's what's dangerous is, especially in like urban places, um, you've got like wandering spiders and you've got this like funnel web or this one type of spider in Australia that is quite dangerous. Yeah. That when you get bit by it, you have to seek medical attention. Now, they haven't had a death from that type of spider in a long time, but it's still dangerous especially with as many of them that you could find right now because of the flooding. But here's what I'll say. You know, here's what I'll say. Um, COVID is the construct of Mother Nature saying, quit fucking with me, human race. Right. There's too many of you. Some of you got to fucking die because you're destroying me. Are you thinking that Mother Nature shot a secondary arrow at Australia for being... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're like, they're yeah. like, listen, we missed you the first time, but we're going to get you the second time. It's like the accounting room at Mother Nature's headquarters. They're like, uh, so we just got the numbers back. Everything's looking good. Everything's looking good across the globe. Australia like, good. Is I'm glad to see that we are killing people like we intended. And they're like, oh, but um, uh, there is one thing, ma'am. What is it? Well, uh, Australia is... Australia is actually okay. What do you mean they're okay? Uh, like six people died. <laughs> I thought we were targeting our goal for Australia was a hundred thousand people. Yeah, they, they, we we're like four. Cl- <laughs> we didn't even come close. Emergency! Slam the button. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> What can we give them? What can we give them? Fucking flood their asses. They don't have spiders. fucking sewers. <laughs> well, guess what else they got? Spiders. Can you guess what else? We already saw the spider. Oh. Oh. You know, I don't know if got. I saw the other thing. Hold on. Wait, what those are that? rats. Oh, my. From the water? <laughs> those are rats. Yeah. Oh, we should. Well, there's, there's a, um, there's part of this news story. It's a lady said that she woke up with one in her bed it crawled out of her pillowcase wait 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 so mother nature did better than i thought she was gonna do she was like fucking send in the plague (laughs) (laughs) poisonous snakes and spiders are not doing it give them the rodents (laughs) rabies for everybody that is fucking wild Dude, it's dude, Australia. <laughs> Australia is so fucked. That is so crazy. <laughs> Look at that shit. Look at all the mice. Dude, the guy. So Pip Gold's. Okay, I gotta read. <laughs> I gotta read this. I love this. They stink whether they're alive or dead. You can escape the smell sometimes. Pip Goldsmith <laughs> of Coon Ramp. Let's Coon <laughs> Who has trapped thousands of mice, told the Guardian Australia. It's impressive, but we're resilient. <laughs> it's like his job at the moment, she said. He's very proud of himself. <laughs> Dude. Dude, that's so oh, wild. It's so, is that not just terrifying? Well, well fuck. Spiders and snakes weren't enough. It's like, bring in the rats. <laughs> Here we go. You guys are ready for some shit? <laughs> <laughs> we're really we're really tossing the full fucking kitchen sink at you now oh yeah dude oh, it's yeah. wild <laughs> i love the fact <laughs> i love that their fucking president prime minister was just so stoked about the covid number <laughs> 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 and then mother nature's like spiders <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're like crawling under people's walls and shit. They're Ooh. fucking everywhere. You cannot sleep soundly in Australia. And they're poisonous ones. They're oh, venomous, no. not poisonous venomous. So many. So many. They said like the, all the trees where there's flooding are just lined with snakes. They're I just it. sitting up in the fucking trees. <laughs> Dude, it's so great. I just love how she's like <laughs> think Australia you, did it. We beat COVID. Could you, could you have, like the fuck you did. Could you imagine the first day it happens and you're gonna go get the mail from the mailbox in your front of your house? You open the door and there's just thousands of rats, snakes, <laughs> and spiders lining everything. You're like, I'm not going out there. No, 
dude, it's that is my worst nightmare. <laughs> the spiders, the snakes. Well, they're venomous snakes, so fuck that. Don't like rats either. But she, <laughs> the one lady, <laughs> Lucy Thackeray, um, she said a preview of our next nightmare. This mom of a newborn is at her wits after being bitten by mice while she sleeps. Watch while one crawls out of her pillow. <laughs> bit. Bit. She's being bit by him in her own bed. Yeah. Oh, which means she's rolling on him or something. Yeah. I mean, they're everywhere. So, she, yeah, she's rolling on. They're, they're probably trying to get warm and dry or whatever because of these conditions. And then they fucking just rolls over on a mouse and it's like. <laughs> fucking latches under love handles god dude is that not fucking it, it literally dude i was like when i it was hard for me to watch all the spiders in the water after i watched it a few times i'm like okay i'm used to this so like i can calm down a little bit but the first time i saw it i went into like full panic i was like like i was stop breathing because that shit fucking fills me with anxiety like think about it they're literally all immigrants I know. <laughs> storm, They're all refugees. Storm the borders. Speaking of refugees. Ooh. Yeah. Build that wall, as they say. Yeah. Getting bad. You, did you hear? This is really funny. So I love the hypocrisy on both sides, by the way. You know how I'm an equal opportunist when it comes to political parties. Sure. The both sides of them. Bunch of cunts. Anyway, so what I found to be hilarious is the press secretary of Biden had said, which someone had interviewed her, I forget what news outlet, I don't even think it was Fox, I can't remember who it was, said something about like, um, we heard statements from White House personnel that uh, uh, President Biden is going to take steps to rectify the border crisis. And she's like, she didn't call it a crisis. She said, I forget what other term she used. And she said, basically talking about filling the gaps of the wall. So, and and she goes, she said something about like it not being a crisis, but it was like, we needed to bring attention to, oh, she said the situation is overwhelming for the border patrol. And he goes, oh, so you mean the immigration crisis? And she, and she said something like a simple answer. There can't be a simple answer for a not simple question. That was her response. And like the reporter's like, what? And, um, so then he asked her about like filling the gaps. He's like, well, now it's being suggested that the gaps in the wall that were not able to be finished by Trump, that Biden is considering filling in those gaps. And she said something else that wasn't that would like something to essentially like lessen the severity of the issue of all these people that are trying to get into the country that are literally like, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the pictures. It's crazy. Like it looks so fucking overwhelming, which by the way, Nobody in the Biden administration has visited the border. There's pictures of that. Uh, what's her name? AOC, uh, whatever Cortez lady fucking total fucking nightmare. She's a nightmare. I don't care which side you're on. That bitch is fucking crazy. There's pictures of her in 2018 at the border crying on the fence. She did like a photo op. She's like dressed all in white and she's like holding. Hey, hey like get crying. a picture of me real quick. Hold on. Um, it's like, do you have any um, eye drops? Yeah, I think we got someone in the truck. Can you hand them to me real quick? What do you need eye drops for? I want to do a really dramatic photo to Hold show. On, I'm, gonna see, I'm gonna see if I can find the pictures of like her. Yeah, here's her like. Oh yeah, these are good. There's like dramatic pictures of her like crying at the border. And uh oh yeah, these are like what came out at the time. Let me see if I can find them. Ah, damn it. Hold on. Pepper spray me. What? What? Let yeah, me. that's kind of like what Pepper it is. Pepper spray me. <laughs> so I'll just scroll through like Google images so you can see it. But there was like pictures of her crying at the border. And I like this one. It's a psych. It's just an empty parking lot. <laughs> so it was like a photo op essentially for her to like do that. And now everyone's going, oh, where is she at now? She hasn't visited the border since. And there's this crisis at the border. Or it was a crisis then, but there's no issue now. And she hasn't visited it at all. You know, she suggested over such a long period of time how terrible it was, all these conditions for these children and the conditions for these immigrants just trying to get to the country and make a better life for themselves, which, by the way, I am all for. But to suggest in this moment, 
if you look at the expression on her face, it's this crazy dire situation, which she just wanted to take, a, you know, it was a photo op. It was a way for it's, you know, publicity for her and it's a propaganda machine, right? We know what it is. And then now that there's actually a fucking issue at the port, like a real major issue, nowhere to be found. No one's heard from her. Not a fucking thing. Vice President Harris is in charge of everything that's going on there. She hasn't visited at one time. It's like, I'm not saying the Trump administration was good, but fucking Christ, if you said you were going to be better, you better be better. And they're just not better. Like it's fucking, it's atrocious. It's the whole thing is atrocious. I don't care who you are. If you cannot be objective about that, you are fucking lying to yourself and you're mentally insane. It is so bad. And like, you know, so many people are just turning a blind eye to it. Like it's not a big deal. I'm like, these are people's lives. This is literally people killing themselves every day, trying to cross that fucking river and trying to get over the border every single day to suggest it's not a crisis is fucking crazy. It's crazy. People are literally dying and no one's like, literally no one's doing anything about it. It's wild to me so far. First part of 2021 shitty ass administration, real yeah. fucking terrible. Her it's face fucking poor her face. I almost want to put dialogue or words to it. Cause like the one frowny face of the fence, like just look at it and just think to yourself what she's thinking. Part of me thinks she's thinking, cause I feel like there's memes that we could put to this. It's like, Ooh, shouldn't eat that Tex-Mex food <laughs> where she's like hunched over. It's <laughs> like holding her stomach. <laughs> we could make a lot of memes out of that. <laughs> Dude, the whole fucking thing is just like, well, I'm, and here's the thing is like, I don't need, you know, I don't get. I don't get spun in the fucking nasty web of politics, but like I am human. <laughs> sick, so I see shit like this and I go, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, shouldn't wear white. I think I just started my period. <laughs> <laughs> just, the image of her like looking down. <laughs> You'd easily Photoshop something in there. You'd probably end up dead two days later. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're already coming for me. <laughs> can't fuck with politicians now, dude. It's crazy. <laughs> Especially on that side of it. Ooh, it's wild. Anyway. Hey, um, we got a cigar review today. We should yep. probably get to that. Um, we should probably get to that. That was my Forrest Gump voice. Jenny. Jenny. Jen <laughs> we go together like peas and carrots. Um, so we are, and we did, we didn't, we did a foundation cigar not that long ago. We did the David, but yeah. now we're doing an even newer one, which is the Charter Oak Cabana. Actually, I don't know if it's newer than the David. I feel like they all came out at the same time. Like they the, might have came the, out. The, the fifth anniversary and the David and the Charter Oak Cabano. I think this one is cool because of its very touted predecessor being the Charter Oak Maduro. Obviously, there's a Connecticut. No one likes it. Let's be real. I don't even know how the thing sells. If anyone says they like the Charter Oak Connecticut just needs to go on the fucking ship and Australia list. Um, but, the, but the Charter Oak Maduro... We've always That's suggested one longer. of the best cigars that you can get for the price. Yeah. So of course, when this came out, I was so intrigued by the release because I'm thinking in my head, could it be as good or could it be better than the Charter Oak Maduro? Is it possible? And we're going to explore that today. I just love the background to Charter Oak. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. So I've... It's actually is it's actually a representation of the Charter Oak Country Club, which is a very prestigious country club. Um, and it's charter members like Trump's in it. Um, well, Indiana Cortez is in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oprah's in it. Like it's the most prestigious club ever, and I apparently. Uh, Nick's in it from foundation. Um, but it's just, it's a super cool club, but it's like super like hush hush, you know? Um, but like, I got two tickets if you want to go, Corey, two admissions. I say we go. I say we gotta go. Let's go to the club. Like they, like their charter is like, they said like when you're a member you can do anything you want, like anything. Is this like some Jeffrey Epstein stuff? I think so. Hmm. But it's like super hush hush, so we can't talk about it on the show. So we're gonna have to like, yeah. But anyways, it's like 
you like have to be someone to to like be there, you know? And I feel like with the couple hundred I think they've taken notice the couple hundred plays we get like a month. <laughs> um they're like these guys are fucking serious. <laughs> like they're they're like they're on the up and up and we want to like take them underneath our giant arm fat wings, you know? And so yeah, we got two invites, bro. That's two awesome, invites. man. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I say we join the club. Yeah. I think so too. Um, but before we join the club, we actually have to talk about the cigar itself. Chris, before we get into it, how do we break these down? Sure. Each cigar is broken down into three main categories, construction, burn, and flavor. We then see if the cigar is worth the price for a possible bonus or deduction. And then we finally average out our individual review scores and recommendations um, together as one. That's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> this was a kind of late 2020 release. I think it technically came out in September, but I feel like it didn't really hit the shelf until like the October, at least around us until October, November timeframe. And it still isn't technically everywhere. Um, manufactured at the AJ Fernandez factory, um, as a lot of foundation cigars are these days. Um, components of the cigar, Ecuadorian Habano for the wrapper type. Binder Nicaraguan filler Nicaraguan. We smoked this in the Rothschild, which is a four and a half by 50, which I think is one of the most popular Vitolas for the Charter Oak. I think is what I like the most about it is it's one of those really just good short smokes, like in the Maduro. I really like that. Price comes in at 570 MSRP. Now, if you remember back to last year, the foundation actually raised the price on this. Typically, the foundation Charter Oak Maduro was sub $5. I think it was right at five four ninety nine dollars in that price range. So there is a bit, a tiny bit of an increase on this. I'm, well, relatively speaking, it's a big increase, but it still falls far short of an industry average at about five seventy dollars a piece for this cigar. So what we're going to talk about, of course, and we always talk about is the value of the cigar overall, but also keeping in mind that there was a price increase on the line overall back in 2020. Hmm. So let's get into it, Chris. What did you think about the construction of this short little donger? I'm starting to think that the reason it's so cheap is because they forgo on production quality. Listen, it doesn't even have an open-ended foot. They didn't even cut the foot. They just left everything on there. Think Some about would it. argue, though, that that gives you more. Seems pretty lazy to me. <laughs> I'm sure they were like, listen, you know what? We've run the numbers. You know how many we can produce without having to clip the fucking foreskin off this thing? <laughs> we've run the numbers, and we've found that while it does take nearly three seconds to cut the end of this cigar on the foot. Um, it's costing us about, it's costing us about 30 cents every cigar to cut the foot. But if we decide to not cut the foot, foot, fuck <laughs> the foot, then we can lower the price and increase sales overall across the industry. And I'm sure in that boardroom, everybody's clapping their ass off like, we're saving money. We're going to make more money. Now, to but, suggest that anybody was sitting in a boardroom having this conversation, <laughs> didn't happen. I mean, didn't happen. You think Nick Malillo sits in boardrooms? Jail cell. Did that guy probably, he's probably sitting and like dipping his feet in a koi pond while he's having conversations. Have you seen him? He does seem like a, a koi fish lover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some would suggest. No, Kale, I'm, I'm, Hi, Kale. Love you. I mined iron. I mined an iron block, and now I got a piece of iron. I can make an iron sword, and I made it. I had to get a wooden pickaxe and mine stone, and I get cobblestone. I can't use it with anything else. I can't use it with the sword. Well, since you're here, what did you think about the cigar? Oh, no, we gave up. <laughs> okay, I love you. Keep mining that cobblestone. God. Um, anyway, oh did we talk about construction? Did you talk about construction? No, I didn't. I just gave did the foot shit. Did you fucking shit. get into it? Um, you know, 
It looks just like the Maduro. I know it says Habano on the name, but there is no distinguishable difference for me. Like really? Zero. Dude, the Maduro is so dark and toothy. It's like Connecticut <sighs> Broadleaf. It's a fucking completely different rapper. Maybe it's been a while, but it looked the same to me. Oh my God, you are fucking well, high on Maybe ass. I do like a once over. Maybe I have to like pull down the glasses to like Chris, look at it. Are you fucking me right now? Look like same scar to me. Oh, you are, f- dude. <laughs> Same one to me. Have you seen how fucking toothy and rigid the Charter Oak Maduro is? Same cigar. Chris, it's not the same cigar. I'm going to pull this up for you because you're fucking psycho. Same one. Really? Yep. Is that the same thing you smoked? Mm, that's looking a bit Connecticut broadleafy. <laughs> <laughs> is that the same thing you smoked? Yes or no? Uh, um. I would say for the sake of my argument and winning this debate, yes, it was. Very what similar. site am I on? Am I on Dojo's? Oh, am, I, am I on Dojo's site? Sorry, Dojo. I'm ripping off your image. Oh, no. Nope, maybe I'm half wheels. In that case, I don't care. Um, I don't know whose site I'm on. Whoever, decent close-up pictures. Though, look how toothy that is. And it's dark, it's dark as fuck. <sighs> Same cigar. Are you fucking psycho? You're. Who are you? Are you fucking blind? It is. Look at, the, look at that. That thing's got... Dude, that's got like fucking pimples all over it. Yeah, but look at the other one up there. That thing is a herpes ridden cigar. This one, look how dark that is. That's been photo edited. Dude, you're fucking crazy. Literally not even. First of all, the Habano is not toothy. It's got a a very satin sheen type of finish to it. It's very smooth, slightly oily. There's no bumps. There's no ridges. There's no toothiness. And by the way, it's like 20 fucking shades lighter. Nope, looks same color to me. Uh, you're fucking crazy. Now, in all fairness, I did smoke it at night. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Oh, just, so hold on real quick. <laughs> do, do you want to see what the Habano looks like, Chris? Yep. Do we want to see maybe an image of the Habano so we can all get some sort of idea of how fucking different they are? Give me a one second. Now, try to tell me, Chris, are those the same? No, in fact, that is actually also Photoshop. That is the Connecticut Charter Oak. I love how you're taking the stance that dad would take and the fact that you're just adamantly <laughs> not wrong about anything. <laughs> now, I like how you're like, not a lot of difference between the two. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're the two most different cigars I've ever fucking seen. Nope. <laughs> Chris, one's Robert De Niro, like a can, Italian, and one's Wesley Snipes. Ooh. They're, two, they're totally different. Okay. Or the guy from Green Mile. Or Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. There you go. You got a little bit of that Italian skin. Italian skin. Dude, you... <laughs> what the fuck were you looking at? The Charter Oak Cabano that is identical to the Maduro. All right, get into the rest of construction minus your... F- oh, Jesus Christ. It's a great construction. You Are know, you done? It's a little lazy with a foot. All right. But, you know, I'm not going to take any points away. Just go. <laughs> um. So, clearly not at all the same as the Charter Oak. And, dude, I smoked some of the Charter Oak Maduro, and I looked at him. I go, wow, this is vastly different in terms of construction and product overall. Completely different. Um, cigar actually one of the similarities I like is the fact that they're both really firm very light in the hands these are not dense cigars they're not very heavy even for the Vitola like the size you could you could almost say like hey well it's a smaller Vitola it's a four and a half by 50 of course it's gonna be lighter no what I mean like it's it's more feathery in terms of your hands than it is like brick or rock you know some cigars are just fucking dense and heavy that's not the cigar silky smooth wrapper I personally love the closed foot on this cigar. One of the things I really liked about the Charter Oak Maduro having the closed foot is that rush of flavor up front because you have that extra tobacco just right on the end. It's like that first initial hit, that first initial rush. I was excited the fact that this one had the same component, hoping it was going to give me the same experience, which we'll get into a little bit later. Chris, what did you think about the burn? Okay. Well, so now that you just... were completely fucking wrong in the construction, I'd love to hear your take on the burn. All right. Ass. It burns exactly like the Maduro. Coincidence? I don't remember the burn on the Maduro. I remember the construction. Coincidence? I think not. Listen, it's a one-three puffer. 
I know I said one three, and that seems weird. But there was moments of the cigar where it was super effortless to get a great mouthful of smoke. Interesting. There was other moments where it was a little bit more challenging. And it was more challenging actually at the foot, which I think is probably indicative of a closed foot. But that's okay. All in all, really consistent. Burns real evenly. Um, it passed the whole test. No problems. I, it like... It had just the right amount of resistance, but also the right amount of airiness. And I think that's kind of goes back to your point. It's kind of built like a NASA space shuttle. You know, it's super light, but it's super rigid. But it like it's still dense at the same time, but airy at the same time. Does that make sense? Not really, because every time I see a depiction of a space shuttle in space and like one tiny rock hits it, the next thing you know, the fucking crew doesn't have oxygen for like the next week. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they seem like the most fragile fucking things on earth. They're not supposed to be, but you have to understand space shit, Corey, space debris, space trash can travel at over 15,000 miles an hour. So, well, then why are we shooting fucking people up there? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Cause we're dumb. <laughs> Clearly. There's so much space trash. It's a real problem, people. It's a real problem. But all in all, I thought the burn was amazing, dude. Um, and I think the Rothschild Vitola lends itself to make it that great. Dude, it's um it's Vitola. just like it's it's just the right amount of resistance, but super airy and light and great smoke production. It's like what you want out of any cigar that you smoke. It like burned perfectly. Well, that's good. At least you got one thing. It seems like it's respectable and correct. <laughs> um, I'm using your puffer analogies now. So I called this one a three, four puffer. Really Ooh. tough on the draw. Yeah, really tough on the draw in the first two thirds, as a matter of fact. Really t- first two thirds of the cigar. And it's weird because it wasn't a tight draw. It just seemed like I was having challenges keeping it lit. Now, obviously, environmental conditions, it's drier than a popcorn fart here. So that's not it. I keep everything super controlled, especially my review inventory. So that wasn't it. Something lends itself to the construction of the cigar and the way that it was produced that just, it was just, it seemed really, and I don't know, you know, oftentimes we talk about, okay, with combination of wrapper, binder and filler and combustion overall, keeping an even burn line. Some cigars are more challenged by that than others. We always talk about the cigars in terms of like having the center components of Lajero that create the peak and so on and so forth. So you have you have some tobaccos that, because of their oil composition, burn slower or faster than others. Sure. And I don't know if it had something to do with that because environmental conditions, again, would lend itself to say that they're probably sure to burn a little bit faster, but it almost seemed like I was just having trouble keeping lit. Like I'm really like, but not a tight draw, good smoke production when it started to get going, but it just seemed like it just took a little bit to kind of turn the engines every time. You know what type of cigars burn slower, Corey? Because of oil oils? Maduro's. Yeah, this is not a Maduro. Let's be clear. Um, uh, What I will say to the positive, and by the way, I said only, and I'll repeat this, only the first two thirds of the cigar. As I got to the last of the cigar, it started smoking very normal, easy. It was easy draw, great smoke production that continued on. Um, And one of the things I actually really liked about the cigar was the incredible even burn line which actually is in comparison to the Maduro, something I've always liked about the Maduro is like, you never really get an uneven burn on it. So the burn line overall was just fucking phenomenal. So challenges with just kind of keeping and maintaining. And I like to, I, so here's the thing. I like to smoke cigars fast. So someone who doesn't smoke cigars fast would be very challenged by this. There would definitely be some relights still trying to figure out in my head. Okay. What was going on that would create that over a period of time? Because there really, it wasn't, there didn't seem like there was any soft spots or any pitting in the cigar where there was just loose tobacco or no tobacco. It wasn't like that. It just seemed like it just couldn't stay lit, almost just like combustion was just going out. Um, so a little bit of a faux pas there, but overall pretty damn good. Chris, Yeah. what flavors did you get from the cigar? Mm, yes. Very indicative of the other ones. Um, it's you get a from the get go. You get a lot of bitterness and earthiness, which I like. This Charter Cabano also lent itself to some medium spice up front, um, which is also very pleasant for me. Um, but what's great about the cigar is even in this little Rothschild, there's this gradual um, kind of pattern of going towards a more smooth experience. 
there was a lot of mild creamy notes that came out later in the cigar that I really liked. Um, and even kind of that earthiness started to morph into maybe a little bit more of like a very, uh, very kind of explicit, like woodiness that I really liked about it. But the cigar overall had a lot of earthy flavors to it with some creaminess and that gradual transition from a little bit more of a bite at the beginning to more of a smoother cigar towards the latter part was just really nice because you can burn through these things pretty quickly in all honesty. Like if you're, if you're a chiefer like Corey is 45 minutes, an hour tops, if you're babying it like hour and a half at most probably. Maybe. Yeah. That's maybe. Yeah. But so to have such a gradual kind of change overall, even in a short smoking experience kind of leaves you wanting a little bit more out of it, which I'm pretty sure you can get a bigger Vitola. But uh, it was nice. It was kind of like a little, like a little dessert, like a little dessert tray. I liked it. It's actually kind of a, it's kind of a good way of putting it. Um, I agree with you in terms of like, yeah, it's got a little bit of that pepper up front indicative of having that close foot, which I really like. I love that rush of flavors, even if it's pepper, which is something I don't like as much. I love just kind of coming out of the gate, super strong, like boom, it hits you in the face and then everything kind of. I would say averages out and tails off and remains consistent throughout the rest of the cigar. For me, it was very peppery. It's very woody, very creamy, like creamy throughout. I've got a, yeah. some of those like bitter, like bitter mineral flavors. So I think some of that, what you got in some, in some intervals of the cigar, are very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also got a little bit of like a floralness too. In the latter half of the cigar, it actually reminded me somewhat of like the aromatics that you get from a Davidoff, which I really love that Davidoffs are very aromatic and very florally. I got some of that as well, which I really enjoyed in the cigar. I thought it created a wonderful balance. Um, what I will say about this cigar um, is that the balance overall was something that was, I think, is strikingly important to this cigar. Because for me, there's certain intervals of a lot of cigars in the first third, second third, and then the final third where I can go, okay, well, this piece of it, I could take it or leave it. This piece of it, I really enjoyed. And then maybe in the last half, it was kind of a take it or leave it, or, Hey, this particular piece of it wasn't as, you know, it didn't hit my palate the same way. There's always seems to be something in a component of a cigar that I just don't enjoy to the nth degree. What I liked about this cigar, although I would say is more medium bodied and more subtle in terms of the flavors the balance overall was one of the best I've had in a long time. I really enjoyed the combination of flavors and they all really melded and worked together throughout the entire cigar. Now it's a short cigar. We already said four and a half by 50. It is a short smoke for me. I think it was like 45 minutes, right at 45 minutes. Um, and one of the other things I'll say about the cigar that I think even though, and I said earlier, there was a price increase on the charter Oak line and some other foundation cigars overall I think still coming up sub six for this Vitola and getting this kind of experience out of the cigar, you cannot deny that it's an amazing value. Is it as good before when you could get these for right at $5? No, because there's 70 cents more. Are they still fucking good? Absolutely. Still worth it. I think the cigar was great. I love this release. It finalized to me the Charter Oak release, Connecticut, Maduro, amazing, Habano, in my opinion, fucking great cigar it just really just balances out the rest of the line it completes the series i love the fact that it came out super excited for it thought it was great yeah so with that being said value of course i give it a bonus i give it a bonus too it's it's hard to dispute it it really is even if you prefer maybe the maduro over this one um you, you you can't deny that the value in the quality you know in comparison to the quality doesn't you know ex- like the quality exceeds the price point of course like it just does so it's just like that. you can't yeah. deny it's not worth more and if you like the flavors of it it certainly yeah. exceeds yeah. the value overall yeah so that being said we both give it a one point or one percent bonus chris what was your score overall listen on this bro charter oak habano 10 out of 10 on construction great construction lazy on the foot you need to work on that burn 
20 out of 20. I had a really good burn experience, even with a little bit of a challenge of tightness up front. Um, it was super airy and kind of the right amount of resistance uh, for the rest of the cigar. Flavors. I thought, honestly, it's a it's a, it's a a challenger to most cigars. I would say it would place in a lot of people's probably go-tos, like Daily Smokes. I gave it a 25 out of 30 on flavor with that 1% bonus. Mine comes out to a 92.7%, which is a highly recommended cigar. Damn, daddy. Damn, daddy. Ooh, damn, daddy. Um, I gave it a 10 out of 10 on construction. Thought it was fucking flawless. Looks nothing like the Maduro, not toothy at all. Very satin smooth. Um, thought construction was damn great on the cigar. Obviously had a challenge with trying to keep this cigar staying lit. As I've already said, if it weren't for me smoking cigars fast and other smart cigar smokers who don't would have had certainly had challenges with the cigar. So I gave it minus one point for that 19 out of 20. Thought the flavor was exceptional that the flavor was amazing on the cigar gave it a 26 out of 31 percent nice. bonus which also gives me a score of a 92.7 which we will round out to a solid 93 i think so appropriate for this cigar value overall you know one of the things i did uh like two years ago mm -hmm which I never do this. I never buy boxes of anything. So if I buy a box of something, it's because I really enjoy it. I've bought a box of like three different things. I bought a box. Actually, I've bought multiple boxes of the Charter Oak Maduro. That's how much I like them. It has nothing to do with the price. I just think they're fucking great cigars. You know, the price is just a bonus for me. I think they're that good. And I love that Vitola because I was really looking for something at the time. And I've said this before. There's always situations that I get casted in where it's like, I got 45 minutes to smoke. That's all the time allotment I have in the evening to enjoy a cigar. I don't have two hours. I don't have an hour and a half. I don't even have an hour. I need 45 fucking minutes. What's going to hit the mark? For me, it was always the Charter Oak Maduro. So I just continued buying it. So it fits that mold for me and also gives me the flavor profile I want to kind of wet my whistle a little bit in that 45 minutes. It always hits that mark. For me, the Charter Oak Habano now is one that I would 100% say is box worthy. Such a good cigar for the price. Totally worthy, in my opinion, of a 93. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And what a prestigious fucking club. <laughs> I know. Look at that. Dude. Was that the... That's not the highest rated cigar we've had thus far, is it? Mm, maybe as like a group. Yeah, maybe yeah, as... Yeah, between the two of ticket. us. Yeah. yeah. Probably looking at it a little bit further. Um, I'm going to skip Chris questions this week. Sorry. I don't care enough to ask them. Um, honestly, it's mostly because, check this out. <sighs> it's nice on you when you go outside? No, the sun's coming through the window and I'm sweating so no. bad. It was stormy. You know, it's been storming all day yeah. and it was supposed to rain the entire night. And all of a sudden, before I started the podcast, it was sunny. And I looked at my watch to look at the weather. And I was like, oh, it's going to be nice the rest of the night. That sun came out, dude. My office went up fucking 15 degrees. Woo! I'm sweating so bad right now. Part of it is Carlisle's farting. The other part of it is the sun just comes through that. I mean, even with the blinds closed, dude, it gets so hot in here and all the equipment. Think about it. I have a computer, a 37-inch monitor, another computer, another PC, my mixing board, and my Mac all hooked up at the same time, plus my light. And my other lights in the back. That's it true. Just, it's fucking hot. I need to get, honestly, I need to get a fan. I got to get a fan for it because my equipment's just going to start frying at some point. <laughs> like, it's just That's gonna true. Start, it's just going to start shutting down. I know it's going to happen because it just gets too hot in here. But yeah, I'm sweating. So I got, I just got to go. I don't have time for questions, Chris. I'm sorry. That's okay. We'll get to know you next time. Oh, That's next week. One. Next week, I'm going to do another overrated, underrated cigar brands. We're due. We're fucking due. We haven't done one in a while. It's been months. Okay. So we're going to do something. We're going to do that. Oh, by the way, I that's what I got in the mail. Would have been really good, actually, for the new website. I got Danny's new voyage. Oh, shit. He sent us some. So I've got them. I haven't opened the box yet, but I really want to smoke it. But I don't want to smoke it without you. So if you want to get together on Saturday, I think that's what we should do. Okay. I'm really excited to smoke that cigar. Like, really fucking. And I think... We'll do the overrated, underrated next week, and then the week after, we can plug in the uh, the voyage. I think it's appropriate timing. We should just play that that stick song on repeat, like I'm sending it away. I'm setting it. off in calls. I hate that song. <laughs> oh, hate come it. on, man! I fucking hate that song. It's terrible. Cause I've got to be free. <laughs> it's terrible. I was listening to Rat earlier. Yeah. It's 
It's really good. Round and round. Huh. Around. Time. Yeah, it was that's such a great song. It's the only good song they've had, but it was I was listening to it and I was like, Man, this is a good song. <laughs> Those guys are like 90 years old now. Yeah, they're pretty old now. They yeah. can barely fucking move. Yeah. A geriatric and shit. I think one was wearing a colostomy bag in a commercial <laughs> I saw not too long ago. Anyway, um, all right, let's wrap this up. Please visit our show sponsor, My Cigar Pack at mycigarpack.com. You can see below. That's my way of saying, <laughs> Chris, give me the graphic. You can see below. You can go to mycigarpack.com to subscribe to the My Cigar Pack. And you can also subscribe to the Factory Direct Packs. I will say this. It's just a precursor to what is to come. We released the Dongers Knockout. We got a new one coming. Should be June timeframe. And we're going to have a new, a new Dongers release. So stay tuned for that. It's coming in a couple months. Totally fucking stoked on that. Oh, show. Um, we also, I know I laugh too every time I think about that drawing. Um, <laughs> you can also visit our website, www.hotticketweekly.com for reviews. Anything related to the podcast you'll find on the website. We are, and I'm just going to say it because I'm excited. We're going through a website refresh. Part of me saying this is just to keep Chris honest to continue building it. That's what I do because <laughs> I do it on here to the public so I can keep him honest. The public can keep him honest. The, the audience as a whole can go, Chris, where's the website? We've all been waiting. Um, <laughs> and I will say this. It's fucking dope. Like the design around it is just in fucking sane. So it's just kicking it up like 40 fucking notches from where we're already at. People always give us kudos on our website. This is just hands down, just fucking incredible. So I'm really excited about that, but visit the website in the meantime, www.hotticketweekly.com, which you'll also see below. All right, let's wrap it up. It's great to see you as always. Good to see you. I'll see you at the club uh, tomorrow. Yeah, let's... Um, Do you want I, I will say pool? this. I was told that we're doing a spitz. So bring some swim trunks. Yeah. Do you or want a carpool? If you don't like swim trunks, you know the other option. Yeah. Yeah, we can carpool for sure. They also said empty out your checking accounts and bring all of your belongings with you. It's indicative of most charter clubs, <laughs> and I've been told. All right. Well, this concludes episode 193. We'll be back at you next week with episode 194. See you, everyone.